Hello everyone, my name is Alara, and I'm here to share a story that sheds light on my incredibly entitled and eccentric mother-in-law, Avalon. My husband, Soren, suggested sharing this story because he enjoys reading such anecdotes from time to time. If you find this odd, let me assure you that he's well aware of his mother's eccentricities. After all, he was her first victim. Let me start from the beginning. Soren grew up with his mom, Avalon, who was once married to his dad. However, his dad divorced her shortly after Soren was born, having experienced her craziness firsthand. He distanced himself as much as possible. Unfortunately, Avalon's taste in men didn't improve, leading her to choose a man who abandoned their child. Soren's father ended up paying child support, but later terminated his parental rights. I've never met the man, nor do I wish to. Avalon claimed to have single-handedly raised Soren, but the truth is far from that. She used Soren to extract money from her family and lived off them for as long as possible. When they grew tired of her antics, she begrudgingly found a job, but still relied on Soren for financial support. From the time Soren was a teenager until he turned 18, Avalon siphoned off all the money he earned from his jobs. Soren knew he needed to break free, so he took out student loans and earned a scholarship to attend college. That's where we met. From the outset, Soren shared horror stories about his mother with me. Trust me, I was furious on his behalf. It was appalling to see a perfectly healthy woman exploit her teenage son for basic necessities. I often voiced my disbelief, asking Soren why he still maintained contact with her. I would have cut ties long ago, I told him. But Soren, conditioned by his narcissistic upbringing, struggled to sever those ties. I can't do that, Alara, he confessed. I was raised to believe that taking care of her is my responsibility. It's hard to shake off those teachings. It's not healthy, Soren, I insisted. You still send her money from your part-time jobs. You need to prioritize your mental health and seek help. I know, Alara, he admitted. But mom keeps asking for money and guilt trips me. Plus, she keeps choosing the wrong men who only leech off her, which ultimately leads her to leech off me. That's why I can't save money, and I'm trying to pay back my student loans as soon as possible. Distressed by Soren's situation, I dipped into my own savings to kickstart his therapy sessions. He protested, but with love and encouragement, he eventually understood that I only wanted him to be happy. As he delved into therapy, he gained confidence and began standing up to his mom. That's precisely why Avalon never took a liking to me. During our first meeting, she accused me of being a gold-digging witch who poisoned her son against her. How dare you, woman, she exclaimed. You think I wouldn't know it was you? I don't know what you're talking about, Avalon, I retorted. Soren was suffering, and I merely helped him find a therapist with my own money. How does that make me a gold digger when you're the one constantly asking him for money? How dare you call me a gold digger, Avalon fired back. I'm his mother, and he owes me for raising him for 20 years. You have no right to dictate what he does with his earnings, I countered. And it was you who started this confrontation. If you hadn't provoked me, none of this would have happened. Yes, therapy can indeed work wonders, I interjected. Soren has developed a backbone, and it makes me incredibly happy. Avalon didn't seem pleased, but witnessing Soren's growth was a source of immense satisfaction for me. Pleasing as usual, fast forward a few years, Soren and I graduated from college and got married. We both landed very good jobs because we worked our asses off in college. We lived frugally and had a backyard wedding at my parents' place to save money for a house. Meanwhile, Avalon also got married to a horrible man who didn't even know how to respect women. This man is Frank, an absolute unemployed deadbeat who mooched off Avalon. Avalon didn't turn a new leaf either. She pestered Soren for money until he finally agreed to rent her an apartment. She was content with the arrangement until we bought the house. As soon as she knew, she said, Hey, I'm so happy that you finally bought a house. I was getting tired of living in an apartment. So, when can I and Frank move in? Excuse me, what are you talking about? I asked. Well, I'll be moving into your house with Frank, that's what I'm saying. Why should I live in an apartment when you are housing your wife for free, Avalon? Soren replied. We both bought this jointly. I literally co-own this place with Soren. I don't live here for free. You're the one who lives in the apartment for free since Soren pays the rent. Watch your mouth, Alara. I don't tolerate disrespect from anyone. I'm talking to my son about his house. I didn't ask you anything. 
I have the right to talk since it's also my house you are talking about, Avalon retorted. You're not staying with us, and neither is Frank. That's for my son to decide, and he knows that it's his responsibility to take care of me, Soren firmly stated. I'm already taking care of you, Mom. You don't get to move into my house to raise me. That's not how it works, and there is no chance of an argument, so don't even try, Soren added. You're acting like an entitled brat, Keith. Your mom worked hard to raise you, and you need to take some responsibility for her. Now, be a good son and give us a copy of your Soren so that we can move in, Frank demanded. Neither of you is getting a copy of our keys. I'll say this for the last time. You two will not be moving into our house. That's it, Soren declared. You would think that's the end of it. Well, it isn't. For days, Frank and Avalon kept harassing us and guilting us. Avalon even said some horrible things to me because she thought I was manipulating Soren and making him abandon her. It was funny at first, but soon we got fed up. One day, Soren went to their apartment to drive it into their heads that they wouldn't be moving in. We thought our point got across since we stopped hearing from them. Problem solved, or so we thought. Well, not quite. A month after we moved into our house, we had a small vacation coming up. After saving for years, we finally decided to go on a break to celebrate our house purchase. It was supposed to be a relaxing vacation for the two of us by the beach. We both took time off and decided to take things easy for that week. We flew there and had a blast from the first day itself. But as evening came, something shocking happened. Hey, did you love and enjoy the story? Take a moment to like and subscribe for more. I got a notification from the ring camera on my house's door. Yes, we did set up surveillance cameras before we went on vacation since we didn't ask anyone to house it. We thought that it would be important. Now I had no idea who would even show up at the door. The neighborhood is pretty safe, and we have lived there before. Hardly anything ever happened there. So, I was curious why there was so much activity at the house. I opened my phone to see what was going on there. What I found in the live camera footage shocked me. There I saw my dear mother-in-law, Avalon, and her new husband, Frank, moving into our freaking home. Yes, they somehow got into our house and brought 12 bags of clothes. Literally 12 freaking bags. They were moving into the guest room and setting up everything there. Avalon even went into the kitchen to make herself some food. I was shocked and angry at what I was witnessing. I knew that I needed to tell Keith immediately, so I called him over and said, I have some news, Keith. I think we need to talk about it right now. What's so important, Alara? We're on vacation. I'm not in the mood for any serious stuff today, Soren responded. Trust me, Keith, I'm not in the mood to deal with horrible people either. But this situation is dire and needs our immediate attention. I'm afraid it's about your mother. Oh God, what is it this time? Did she manage to break into our house or something? Soren asked, his expression changing as he realized the seriousness of the situation. From the look I gave him, it became apparent to him that he wasn't off the mark. His eyes immediately widened as he tried to make sense of the situation. I pulled out my phone and showed him what Avalon and Frank were doing. He was shocked and looked very angry at what he was seeing. I mean, his joke turned out to be the truth. His mom broke into our new house and was moving in furniture with her husband, I explained. Soren looked a little pissed off and said, You can leave it to my mother to surprise me in the worst way possible. Looks like she didn't take the hint at all. We made it clear that day that she won't be living with us. I'm even surprised as to how she got the keys to our house. It just blows my mind. Her new husband is a sleazy guy, Alara. We both know that. I'm afraid he may have gotten his hands on our keys and made a copy. I wouldn't put it past him. We will need to go back and change the locks. That's the only way we can make sure that they don't budge into our house anytime they like. But what do we do about this current problem? Do you have something in mind? I asked. Look, I know they are your parents and all, but I really want to call the cops on them. What they are doing is illegal and downright scary. They can't be trusted anymore. Calling the cops and getting no contact with them is the best solution possible, I suggested. I gave Soren some time to turn the idea in his head. I could see that he was thinking hard and had grim lines on his forehead, but it didn't take too long for him to come back with a response. His response was way better than I imagined. You know what, Alara? Let's do it, Soren said decisively. Are you sure about that? There will be no going back once we do this, and the cops will drag your mom and Frank to the streets with all their things, I warned. I know that, Alara. I've given them enough chances to improve themselves. 
They've just betrayed my trust every time. I have to stop somewhere. There have to be some consequences. What they did today is not only a breach of our privacy, but also illegal. I think it's time they realize they can't do whatever they want, Soren explained firmly. Would you go no contact with them as well? I asked. Of course. My reluctance to do that has already created a lot of problems. I should have done this a long time ago. I'm freaking stupid and thought mom would grow some sense after I got married. Since that's not happening, I'm going to distance myself from them. It's the only way, and I'm feeling good about it. Soren affirmed. Okay then, if you're on board with it, let's proceed with that plan. But first, let's call your mom and give her a warning. Just a final chance to make this right. I don't have any hope, but we can get evidence that we didn't allow her in our house, I suggested. Soren agreed with the plan and called his mother. She didn't pick up the first time. Through the security cameras, I could see that she was visibly annoyed and went to Frank. They discussed something before answering the call. When we rang the second time, she put the phone on loudspeaker so that Frank could join in as well. Hey Keith, how are you doing? Is the vacation going fine? Avalon greeted. You need to tell me what's going on over there. I don't know what you're talking about. Everything is just breezy here, nothing to worry about really. Soren replied calmly. Avalon, you and Frank breaking into our house is nothing to worry about, I interjected. Avalon went quiet when I said that. On the security tapes, we could see that she tensed and looked at Frank again. I mean, Frank was better at fooling and manipulating people, so this was expected. Avalon wanted her new husband to come up with some plan. What are you even talking about, Alara? Soren, your wife has gone crazy. You need to shut her up, Frank demanded. Don't talk to my wife like that. We know what you two are up to. With cameras in the house, both inside and out, there's no point in lying to us. We can see you on our phones right now, Soren retorted. Wait, what? How dare you spy on us, Keith? This is unacceptable. What about our privacy? You should have been more thoughtful, Avalon protested, feigning indignation. It was ironic how Avalon was offended by the fact that we could see their activities on our screen. She talked about respecting people's privacy when she broke into someone's house and made it her own. I didn't know if Avalon was trying to deflect or if she was genuinely offended. I had a good guess that it's a little bit of both. Her words sparked something in me, and I said, That's rich coming from you, Avalon. You are the one who broke into our private home when we told you that you are not allowed in. I don't care what you say, Alara. It's my son's house, too. So I have the right to be here. I'm his mother and should be staying with him, Avalon insisted stubbornly. I already said no to that, Mom. Just because you're my mother doesn't mean you can go wherever I go. You already have an apartment that I pay for. Who wants to live in that tiny apartment when you have bought such a big house. You're turning into such a selfish man after getting married, Keith. This is unacceptable. You can't expect your mother to live in an apartment while you enjoy a whole house with your wife. That decision is not up to you, Mom. You shouldn't have just packed up your stuff and moved into the house. How did you even get the keys? Both Soren and I were troubled by this question and needed answers immediately. Also, we needed them to confess their wrongs so that we could report them to the police. Our hunch was right. Well, since you decided to be a brat and ignore your mother, I went and made a copy of your keys, Frank admitted shamelessly. Who the hell told you to touch my keys? I didn't permit you to do that, Soren exclaimed. I don't need your permission, Kay. I'm your stepdad. I have the authority to do what I think is right. You don't get to question me, Frank retorted arrogantly. I don't care who you are to me, Frank. I'm a grown man and don't need a parent. What you did was forgery, which are both offenses under the law, Kay, Soren countered. How dare you talk to Frank like that? He only did this because he knew I was sad. A mother should have the keys to her son's house for emergencies and all, Avalon interjected. Right. For emergencies and breaking in whenever you want, you're insane, Avalon. You need to get off our property with all your stuff within an hour. If you don't, we will call the cops, I stated firmly. That made Avalon and Frank look frightened. They visibly panicked and whispered something amongst themselves. Their panic was clear on their faces, and we could see that through the cameras. In the end, they said, Don't threaten us, woman. This is not your house. This is my son's house. Only he gets to make those decisions. This house belongs to both Alara and me, and we both want you to get out before I'm forced to call the cops. Remember that I have you on surveillance, and I will know what you are doing, 
Soren warned sternly. Frank and Avalon started to yell at us when we hung up. We didn't want to go into an argument with them anymore. Their entitled brains were not meant to participate in conversations or healthy discussions. They didn't care about anything but themselves. We gave them one hour while we put all the proof into a folder. Through the cameras, we could see that they were having a discussion, but didn't budge. Instead, Avalon started to unpack her bags. As the hour passed, we called the police with all the evidence we had. Thankfully, they took us seriously and went to our house. We saw the whole fiasco unfold in front of our house. The cops went there and knocked at the door. Avalon and Frank opened the door and immediately feigned confusion. After the officers told them everything, they called us and sang a different tune. Kay, why was there a need to call the cops? We just want to live with our son. Why are you making things so difficult? Tell the cops that this was all a misunderstanding, Avalon pleaded. Mom, I've said that a hundred times now. Stop being so freaking entitled. Leave before the cops arrest you and we are forced to press charges, Soren reiterated firmly. No, 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 Kay. Please listen to me. I've nowhere to go. Don't kick us out. I'm your mother. Do you want your mother to be homeless? Avalon begged desperately. You made yourself homeless, Mom. Since you don't want to stay in a rented apartment anymore, I won't give you rent money anymore. I'm freaking done. You can take your new man and figure out something for yourself. Get out of my house and don't try to contact me again, Soren declared with finality. At this point, Avalon was crying and begging us to hear her out. She even cried to me and brought up my dead mother to guilt me. They had the very opposite reaction than what she expected. Soren and I got so mad that we shouted at them and hung up. We immediately blocked their numbers because they crossed all our boundaries in one day and somehow made things worse than ever. The cops stayed back at the house and made sure that Avalon and Frank left. I called a mutual friend to help house sit until we came back. She also assured me that she would call a locksmith to change our door lock the next day. She's a friend from college, and we trust her a lot. We knew that she would make sure our house was safe. She lived in an apartment, so it was easy for her to come to the house. Frank and Avalon left and went to God knows where. My guess is they spent the night at the hotel and bought new phone numbers to harass us. It didn't work. No relative took their side either because they knew Avalon well enough and they didn't want to be in her drama. Also, they told her in no uncertain terms that they wouldn't house or help her out in any way. That made Avalon focus her attention back on us. For the rest of our vacation, we kept our phones switched off. We opened our phones once daily to check for emergencies, and that's it. We also only called our friend to make sure everything was all right. Yes, Avalon and Frank did show up again and tried to get in. They left after the friend threatened to call the cops again. We are thinking of sending a cease and desist letter before they escalate their behavior. Thankfully, they didn't want to know why. When we got back from vacation, we found out that Frank had decided to leave Avalon. Why, you may ask? because she couldn't house and feed him for free anymore. Avalon was devastated and begged her son to talk to her. She finally realized that she needed her son for money. Soren didn't soften at all. He stuck to the no-contact decision that is still in place today. Last week, we learned from family that Avalon rented a trailer and still works at the retail store with no hope of retirement in sight. Did you enjoy the story? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe for more content like this.